Hey now, before we get started on this week's autograph analysis, a couple of housekeeping. Number one, if you won my 100 subscriber contest, the second place winner has not come through and reached me yet. Hopefully you're watching this. Hopefully you leave a comment or shoot me an email on the email attached and I would be happy to get you your prize out. Number two, as much as I love going through eBay looking for fake autographs, I'm gonna stop that for now. Uh, someone reached out to me that I autograph that I called out on eBay that was TPA certified and I don't want to get into any trouble. Not that I hold any clout, but it's just just in case. So if you have a question, feel free to reach out to me privately. In addition, there are some great Facebook groups out there that are happy to look at your autographs. It's just incredible the amount of mantle forgeries and DiMaggio and Maze, like those three in particular, and Trout. Trout's a real big one. I'll do an autograph analysis on him one day. But the forgers are getting so good that unless you're holding the autograph in your hand, even if you're looking at it up close, it's really tough to tell. And just for liability's sake, I just don't want to speak out a turn, even though I still feel I have a pretty good grasp of the reels from the fake. So that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video coming up. And as always, keep collecting. Hey now, so today's autograph analysis I want to talk about is probably one of the greatest players ever to play the game. He had over 3,000 hits in his career, a lifetime batting average of 333. And... If anyone were to do that today, he also won, I think, six World Series championships. And if anyway, like I said, if anyone were to do that today, they would be a first ballot Hall of Famer. No questions asked. But this player was part of Connie Mack's $100,000 infield. And he also was the first player ever to be traded after winning the MVP award. And he didn't get into the Hall of Fame until 1939, which was his fourth year on the ballot. Uh, I, that player, of course, is Eddie Collins. And I think one of the main reasons why he didn't get in, number one, is because the class of 1936, which he was eligible for, was such a strong class with the initial five they got in, that he is, I guess, a little bit below that tier. And secondly, he was also on the 1919 Black Sox. Now, he was never convicted of taking any money. As a matter of fact, he batted at about 230 for the series, which wasn't that good. But I don't know, just being associated with that team cost him the opportunity to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. So let's take a little bit at the autograph I have of him and what to look for when buying an Eddie Collins autograph. So the good thing about Collins is he was an executive for the Red Sox for about 15 years. And there are a ton, a slew of for that time period considering autographs of documents that he signed including this uniform player contract right here uh, as you can see i framed out the entire contract and i just focused in on his actual signature uh edward collins and again i paid a couple hundred for this believe it or not the cost of his autograph has ticked up a little bit but my guess is you can pick up a nice signed document for around five, six hundred dollars. And it's such a nice, beautiful autograph that uh, this is the only way I would go about getting him, unless you're like a Hall of Fame plaque collector, which they, again, he got inducted in 1939. He passed away in 1951. So there are quite a few of Hall of Fame plaques out there, all black and white. Uh, real quickly, next to him is Robert Quinn, who is also in the Hall of Fame. Now, he's not an inductee of the Hall of Fame, but in 1946, the Hall of Fame did an honor roll for executives, managers, umpires, and even writers. And he did get inducted as an executive. And I do try and pick up the 1946 class of the Hall of Fame honorees. Again, this is the honor rolls, they called it. If I do see them, they, some of them... Not Bob Quinn, but other ones are actually quite rare. Some of these executives like Ed Barrow, uh, John Ward, Miller Huggins, these are just some that come to mind that later did get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now, the chances of them getting the Hall of Fame now are quite low, but I would not say impossible because Hank O'Day, a very rare autograph, was also inducted into the honor roll in 1946 and did get into the Hall of Fame in 2013. So if you do have an Eddie Collins autograph, I'd love to see it. Love to know the medium it's on, if it's a cut or not. I actually have a second Eddie Collins autograph 
that is much more valuable, not because of Eddie Collins, but the other autograph featured on there. I'll show that off one day, but in the meantime, keep collecting.